We have a steel wire of uh, cross-sectional area five millimeter square, and we are hanging a 200 kilogram object from, from that. And we are asked to calculate the percentage change in length of the steel wire. So the wire is going to extend by some amount and we need to calculate how much percentage will the length change. We are asked to assume that we are within the elastic limits and uh, the Young's modulus is given to us, 200 gigapascals. All right, let's solve this. The first thing we'll do is try and understand what the question is. We are asked to calculate percentage change in length. What do we even mean by that? Well, percentage change just means how much is the change out of 100. So if the initial length, let's say the relaxed length was L, and by hanging the weight, let's say the change is delta L, so then we could, raise, we could, we could write that for L length, the change is delta L. So if the initial length was 100, what would be the change? That's the question, right? This is what we need to figure out. And we can, we can just do this one way by just cross multiplying. And we could say, well, the change for 100 would be delta L times 100 times 100 divided by L. So this is what we need to calculate. That's the percentage change. Now, do we know what delta L is? Nope, we don't know that. Do we know what the initial length is? We don't know that as well. So how do we do this? Well, if you look at this carefully, this is the change in length per unit length, and we call this as strain. This is our strain. And we've spoken a lot about strain and stress and Hooke's law and all of that, which we'll be using over here in previous videos. So if you need some refresher, or you know, you, you're you not comfortable with this, then it'll be great to go back, watch that, and then come back over here. But anyways, our goal is really to calculate the strain, and once we do that, we'll just multiply by 100. So how do we calculate this strain? Well, we can't do it directly because we don't know what delta L is or what L is. Another way we can do that is using Hooke's law because Hooke's law says that stress is proportional to strain. And if you look carefully, the stress that we're dealing with is tensile stress because the wire is under tension. The 200 kilogram is pulling down on it and, and, and creating tension. We call that as tensile stress. And whenever we're dealing with tensile stress, the elastic modulus that we should use is the Young's modulus. All right, so let's just write down Hooke's law. We'll put some, right. So Hooke's law says that the longitudinal stress, which is the tensile stress over here, is equal to or proportional to the longitudinal strain, the strain that gets generated over here, and the proportionality constant is the Young's modulus. We know what Y is, we need to calculate this, so we really need to calculate the stress now. And how do you calculate stress? What is the definition of stress? Well, stress is defined as the restoring force per unit area. We know the area, so we need to calculate the restoring force. That's all we need to do. And to do that, we'll just look at a tiny piece of string over here. Uh, string or wire, okay, whatever. So if you take that tiny piece over here, Let's just write down all the forces acting on it. Well, there's one force acting downwards because of the weight of this object, and the weight is 200 kilograms, that's the mass, times G, that's how you calculate weight, mg, 200 G, and G, is, if you take it as 10, we'll just assume it to be 10, then the force that is acting on it downward is 2,000 newtons. That's the, that's the weight. But we know that this piece is not accelerating anywhere, right? I mean, this whole thing is in equilibrium, it's just staying there. That means the total force on this must be zero. So someone must be countering this force. So there must be an upward 2,000 newtons of force. And who's putting that force? Well, that force is due to the piece of steel that is right above that. That's the one that's pulling it up. And if you think about it, this actually is the restoring force. I mean, think about it. If we get rid of this 200 kilogram, this force disappears. This force will accelerate this tiny piece up. And that's how the whole steel wire will snap back to its original length, elasticity. So this is the restoring force. So we have the restoring force. We have the area. We can calculate the stress and we can plug in and we can figure out what the strain is, all right? So we're pretty much done with the physics part over here. Now all we have to do is some algebra, just plugging in. And so feel free to pause the video at this time, try to do the algebra and see if you can get the answer. All right, let's plug in. So stress would be 
2,000 newtons. That's the restoring force per unit area. Per unit area. And the area is um, millimeter square, 10 to the power minus 3. That's milli, meter square. Square. And that's equal to the Young's modulus. That's 200 gigapascals. Giga is 10 to the power 9. And pascals is just newton per meter square. That's what we call as pascals. Newtons per meter square times times E. That's what we need to figure out, E. All right, newtons cancels. There's a meter square over here, and there's a meter square over here. That cancels. And so what we're left out with now is 2,000 divided by 5. We can quickly go ahead and do that. That is 4 times. So we're left with 400 in the numerator. 400 divided by, you have 10 power minus 3 squared. Notice when I cancel that, only meter square got canceled. The 10 power minus 3 is still squared, and that's 10 to the power minus 6. And when you put that on top, you get 10 to the power plus 6. And that's equal to 200 times 10 to the power 9 times E. Okay, cancel some zeros. This two goes two times, a four goes two times. So what we're left now is with E equals, let's see, we have two times 10 to the power six and divided by 10 to the power nine. And that is equal to, let's see what that comes to. That comes out to be 10 to the power minus three. And notice there is no units over here. That should make sense because strain is unitless. Right, meters per meters per meter cancels. So that's our strain. And what does this mean? What is the number telling us? Well, that's telling us that if we had one meter long wire, if we had one meter long wire, then when we put 200 kilograms, then the extension would be two times 10 power minus three meters, or two millimeters. I mean, think about that. Let me just write that down. Let me just make some more space and write that down. This number is just telling us that for for one meter length, the extension would be would ha would have been two millimeters, and that's incredible if you think about it. I mean, we are taking a very thin steel wire, and we are putting two hundred kilograms of mass, and the extension in the wire is just two millimeters. That's insane. That's so tiny that our human eyes may not be able, able to see that, which is why we probably feel that steel doesn't even extend. Right, I mean, that's why you think of it as a perfect rigid body, but it isn't. And that's why it's so marvelous and we use it all the time. And the main reason why we're getting such a small number is because of this insanely high Young's modulus. Turns out that steel has one of the highest values of Young's modulus, and that's why we like steel. All right, anyways, our final question that we need to do is calculate the percentage change. So to do that, we just have to take this number and multiply by 100. Either that, or you can do it directly. You, we now know that for one, for unit length, the change is two times 10 power minus three. For 100, how much would be the change? Well, we just multiply by 100, right? So what is needed now is percentage change, percentage change, and that is, just multiply this by 100, and when you do that, 10 power minus three and 100 becomes 10 power minus one, and that gives us 0 0.2. So that's our final answer. The percentage change in the length of steel wire is just a minuscule 0.2%. Steel is awesome.